war. The scenario doesn't just involve or affect U.S. troops. It affects us financially, affects our families and our friends, even put your own lives at risk. The United States will undoubtedly go to war with Iran in the next two years. The Iranian government has been a thorn in the side of the U.S. for well over three decades. Their nuclear ambition is causing distress in the region that is already a powder cake. Powder cake is an area that is so volatile that the point of if a war breaks out, a regional war, even a world war can happen. Iran has also been defiant to the rest of the world when it comes to weapons control and civil rights that are supposed to be given to its civilians and given to the world. Their aggression towards the na their neighbor Israel and their action towards their own population are once again pushing the United States and her allies into war in this region. The Iranian government, government now led by a terrorist organization formerly known as the Tehran, started building nuclear reactors around seven years ago. The beginning of this nuclear program is unclear and never was stated when it happened. Currently, the Iranian program consists of 26 underground nuclear facilities, which half of them are nuclear-proofed and bombed. When you nuclear-proof something, you either have 400 feet of cement with rebar in between above the facility and its west, north, and south corridors protecting it. There's no bomb, no capability that can break through this type of infrastructure. Why would a country that repeatedly threatens and shows absurd amounts of aggression be trusted with their nuclear program as an energy program for civilians? If so, why would they not allow monitoring from, monitoring from the UN like other countries have allowed? And why would a country enrich uranium 238 beyond 5%? Uranium only needs to be enriched from 5% for energy use. Anything above 5% is towards weapons grade. 90% of rich uranium is weapons grade. Iran right now currently holds 25 pounds of 20% enriched uranium given by the Jerusalem Post September 11, 2001. Why would a country that repeatedly, uh, in this situation relates to older adversary North Korea. When North Korea started its new program, it, similar, it began similarly to Iran's program with multiple underground facilities and supposedly would support nuclear power to respond to South Korean weapons. Israel has, North, has nuclear weapons given to from the United States. Iran simply is just responding from Israel having weapons and now wants weapons of their own to even, even out the battle. The Iranian government continues to hold their original statement that the U, to the UN that their nuclear ambitions are purely peaceful. Yet Ahmadinejad clearly stated his goal to destroy Israel no matter the cost in 2006. As reported by United States correspondent Ezra Halabi, Iranian President Mahmoud Ahmadinejad reiterated Iran's goal of wiping Israel off the map, speaking at a conference of visiting heads of Arab terrorist groups operating in areas under Palestinian authority control. Ahmadinejad said, whether you like it or not, the Zionist regime on the road of being, is on the road of being eliminated. Ahmadinejad recently has encouraged his country to believe this idea by supposedly fooling the world into submission. He's using our own way of democracy against us. Simply, he is allowing sanctions and talks to keep going over and over and over, just like Germany did, just like North Korea has done. It's just the same old situation over and over, as history shows. And he's continuing to do this, and he's continuing to enrich uranium, even though the world is going against Iran and telling them not to. The United States cannot back down from this situation. If we do, we will just have another rogue state with the possibility of intercontinental ballistic nuclear warfare on our hand. We don't need that anymore. Plain and simply, Obama stated over the last few months, and he has continued to state over to Congress, saying all issues and all provocations are not on the table. We will still continue to diplomatically, we will still continue to put out sanctions, and we will still continue to do this the right way. But if Iran does not stop their actions, all options are not off the table. Simply this means, when you say all options are not off the table, simply that just means we will go in there and we will start a war. Iran believes that we're not going to do this considering that they know that there is a powder cake region. But nonetheless, it is going to happen. 
I believe the United States will go to war with Iran in the next two years. In the opening of the speech, I can pick out the proposition, but there are several claims that you have in the introduction, and I think you need to highlight which one is the proposition that you're going to get to. Now, at the end of the speech, when you, come, you, when you finish off, it's very clear what it is, but at the beginning of the speech, I think it needs to be sharper. There's not really any preview of what the supporting structure is going to be, and in fact, in the body of the speech, I didn't really hear a structure. I thought information was coming up in a somewhat random manner in developing this point. Uh, there is some interesting information. The data about the reinforced uh, processing centers, uh, I think, is important. I've only, I think you'd need to give us a source citation on that. You did have a good citation about the amount of weapons-grade uranium that they have. I think that that's pretty important. What we need is some uh, interpretation by experts, either military experts or uh, researchers in the field of nuclear science who can explain what all of this means and what the probability, what the timetables represent, how big a threat this this is, um, do we have to worry about whether or not they have a missile to deliver it or just the ability to create the bomb, so on and so forth. I think uh, you need a little bit more expert uh, analysis on this. You're trying to make the inferences, but I think you need to back it up with some authority here so that it's a little more convincing. Um, the uh, the quotes that you have from Ahmadinejad, I think, definitely show that there is some kind of threat. I think you need to develop that threat a little bit more. Uh, why that? Why the U.S. is going to get involved in that? See, I think that's the part where you need to develop this more. Uh, you've got this general quote about from Obama, and by the way, it sounds like it's a paraphrase rather than a direct statement that says that nothing is off the table. Well, that would include war, but that also doesn't mean that it is on the table, and that's the one that we're going to choose. Uh, so I think that you need to do a little bit more to convince us that that's the only choice that Obama's going to have. At one point, it sounded like you said that the U.S. gave Israel nuclear weapons, and that is just not true. So if you, if you had that in the speech, you need to you know, reevaluate because that's not accurate. All right? Uh, well, actually what I read up on was that uh, we, Israel had bought U.S. weapons from us. Okay. They didn't have nuclear facilities able to enrich Then uh, it's... It's not accurate. It's not accurate. We, you know, in fact, we have, you know, we're signatories of the Non-Proliferation Treaty. That would ex ex explicitly preclude us from arming Israel with nuclear weapons. You know, they have not. They've not even acknowledged that they have nuclear weapons. Now, everybody believes that they have nuclear weapons. All right. I mean, that. I, it's not, I don't think there's any doubt that they. You know, I shouldn't say any doubt. There's. There's. Certainly, you know, that much doubt, but not much that suggests that they have nuclear weapons. But it didn't come from us, you know, because, like I said, that would be a huge issue that's going on. I think that kind of undermines uh, some of the argument as well. Although, you need to show, for instance, why the U.S. is so involved with whatever happens to Israel. So if the crazy uh, you know, Iranian uh, mullahs blow up Israel, what makes you think that we're going to do jack about it? I don't hear any explanation about why we are going to respond in this particular situation. I think you need that. And that's why one of the reasons that you need a lot more structure so we can see how all this information fits together to build the argument. All right.